Greetings everyone. Welcome to English Talk. Today we will learn a new story named Eklavya's Loyalty. Let's get started. Eklavya's Loyalty. This is the story of a long gone era in the country of India. Nearly 5000 years back lived a boy named Eklavya, the son of the tribal chief in the forests of the kingdom Hastinapur. Eklavya was a brave handsome boy. He was loved by all, but he was not happy. His father saw that something troubled Eklavya. More than once he found his son lost deep in thought. When other boys enjoyed the pleasures of hunting and playing, One day the father asked his son why are you so unhappy eklavya why don't you join your friends why are you not interested in hunting father i want to be an archer replied eklavya i want to become a disciple of the great dronacharya the great tutor of archery in hastinapur his gurukul is a magical place where ordinary boys are turned into mighty warriors eklavya saw his father was silent he continued father i know that we belongs we belong to the hunting tribe but i want to be a warrior father not a mere hunter so please allow me to leave home and become the disciple of dronacharya eklavya's father was troubled for he knew that his son's ambition was not an easy one but the chief was a loving father and he did not want to refuse his only son's wish so the kind man gave his blessings and sent his son on his way to drona's gurukul eklavya sat on his way soon he reached the part of the forest where drona taught the princess of hastinapur in those days there was no such system as a school college university or hostel the only place where one could get some education was a gurukul a gurukul guru refers to teachers or master kul refers to his domain from the sanskrit word kula meaning extend family is a type of ancient hindu school in india that is residential in nature with the shishyas or students and guru or teacher living in proximity many a time within the same house the gurukul is the place where the students resided together as equals irrespective of their social standing the students learn from the guru and also help the guru in his day to day life including the carrying out of mundane chores such as washing clothes cooking etc the education imparted thus was a wholesome one having said this such let us now return to eklavya when the boy reached dronacharya's gurukul he saw that it consisted of a group of herds surrounded by trees and an archery yard the disciples were participating to shoot arrows with their bows and arrows in the yard it was an engaging sight but eklavya's eye searched drona where was he 
will he be able to see the man without trona all his purpose of coming here would be meaningless but all his worries soon subsided he did not have to wait for long there was the man standing near a tree busy instructing a boy who was none else than the third pandav prince arjuna as eklavya came to know later though eklavya had never seen drona before he put his guess at work he went near drona and bowed the sage was surprised to see a strange boy addressing him who are you he asked dronacharya i am eklavya son of tribal chief in the western part of the forest of hastinapur eklavya replied please accept me as your disciple and teach me the wonderful art of archery drona sighed eklavya if you are a tribal hunter you must be a shudra the lowest social community according to the vedic caste system i am a brahmin the highest caste in the kingdom i cannot teach a shudra boy he said and he is also a royal teacher interrupted prince arjuna our guru has been appointed by the king to train us the princess and the high born how dare you come inside the gurukul and seek him leave now he spat out looking enraged that eklavya had disturbed his practice eklavya was stunned at arjuna's behavior he himself was the son of the chief of his clan but he never insulted any below him in such a way he looked at drona for some kind of support but the sage remained silent the message was loud and clear dronacharya also wanted him to leave he refused to teach him the innocent tribal boy was deeply hurt by drona's refusal to teach him it's not fair he thought miserable god has given knowledge to all but man alone differentiates his kind he left the place with a broken heart and a bitter taste in his mouth but it could not shatter his ambition to learn archery he was still as determined to learn archery i may be a shudra but does it make any difference thought he i am a i am as strong as jealous as drona's princess and disciples if i practice the art every day i can surely become an archer eklavya reached his own forest and took some mud from a nearby river he made a statue of dronacharya and selected a seculated clearing in the forest to place it eklavya did this because he faithfully believed that he practiced before his guru he would become an able archer thus though his guru shunned him he still held him in high esteem and thought of him as his guru day after day he took his bow and arrow 
worshipped the statue of Drona and started practice. In time, faith, courage and perseverance transformed Eklavya, the mere tribal hunter, into Eklavya, extraordinary archer. Eklavya became an archer of exceptional prowess, superior even to Drona's best pupil. Arjuna, one day while Eklavya is practicing, he hears a dog barking. At first, the boy ignored the dog, but continuous disturbance in his practice angered him. He stopped his practice and went towards the place where the dog was barking before the dog could shut up or get out of the way. Eklavya fired seven arrows in rapid section to fill the dog's mouth without injuring it. As a result, it roamed the forest with its mouth open. But Eklavya was not alone in his practice. He was unaware of the fact that just some distance away the Pandav prince were also present in that area of the forest as fate would have it that day. They had come with their teacher Drona who was instructing them about some finer points of archery by making them learn in the real life condition of the open jungle. As they were busy practicing, they suddenly chanced upon the stuffed dog and wondered who could have pulled off such a feat of archery. Drona was amazed too. Such an excellent aim can only come from a mighty archer, he exclaimed. He told the Pandavas that if somebody was such a good archer, then he surely needed to be met. The practice was stopped and together they began searching the forest for the one behind such amazing feet. They found a dark-skinned man dressed all in black, his body besmirched with filth and his hair is matted locks. It was Eklavya, Dronavcharya went up to him. Your aim is truly remarkable. Drona praised Eklavya and asked, From whom did you learn archery? Eklavya was thrilled to hear Drona's praises. How surprised he will be if he told Drona that he, in fact, was his guru. From you, my master. You are my guru, Eklavya replied humbly. Your guru? How can I be your guru? I have never seen you before, Drona exclaimed in surprise. But all of a sudden, he remembered something. He remembered about an eager boy who had visited his gurukul several months ago. Now I remember, said he, are you not the same hunter boy who I refused admission in my Gurukul some months back? Yes, Dronacharya replied the boy. After I left your Gurukul, I came home and made a statue like you and worshipped it every day. I practiced before your image. You refused to teach me but your statue did not. Thanks to it, I have become a good teacher. Hearing this, Arjuna became angry. But you promised me that you would make me the best archer in the world. He accused Drona. Now how can that be? Now a common hunter has become better than me. The other princes remembered their master 
frequently praising Arjuna that he had immense talent and will be the greatest archer in the kingdom. They waited with bated breath. What will that teacher do now? Unable to answer Arjuna's question, Drona remained silent. The sage too was upset that his promise to Prince Arjuna was not going to be fulfilled. He was also angry with Eklavya for disobeying him. So the sage planned to punish Eklavya. Where is your Guru Dakshina? You have to give me a gift for your training, the sage demanded. He had finally found a way to make Eklavya suffer his disobediency. Eklavya was overjoyed. A Guru Dakshina was the voluntary fee or gift offered by a disciple to his guru at the end of his training. The Guru Shishya Parampara, the teacher-student tra- tradition, was a hallowed tradition in Hinduism. At the end of Ashishya's study, the guru asked for a Guru Dakshina, since a guru does not take fees. A Guru Dakshina is the final offering from the student to the Guru before leaving the ashram. The teacher may ask for something or nothing at all. Dronacharya, I will be the happiest person on the earth to serve you. Ask me anything and I will offer it to you as my Guru Dakshina, he said. I might ask something you don't like to give me. What if you refuse the Dakshina? I want Drona asked cunningly. Eklavya was shocked. It was considered a grave insult and great sign seen if a Guru's Dakshina was refused. No. How can I, teacher? I am not that ungrateful. I will never refuse anything you ask. Dronacharya promised the unsuspecting boy. Drona did not wait any more. Eklavya, I seek to have your right hand thumb as my Guru Dakshina, he declared. Silence befell on everyone. Everyone was shocked, even Arjuna. He looked at his teacher in horror and disbelief. How could you that teacher make such a cruel demand? That too, from a mere boy. For a moment, Eklavya stood silent. Without his thumb, he could never shoot arrows again. But the teacher must be satisfied. Okay, Gurudev, as you wish, said he. Then without the sightless, slightest hesitation, Eklavya drew out his knife and cut his thumb. The princess gasped at Eklavya's act of bravery. But the tribal boy better yard no signs of pain and held out his severed thumb to Dronacharya. Here is my Guru Dakshina Drona. Eklavya said, I am happy that you have made me your disciple, even if I am a mere Shudra hunter. The sage was humbled. He blessed the young archer for his courage. Eklavya, even with out your thumb, you will be known as a great archer. I bless you that you will be remembered forever for your loyalty to your Guru. Drona declared and left the forest. He was moved and grieved at his own action, but he was content that his promise to Arjuna was not broken. 
the god blessed eklavya from above but despite his handicap eklavya continued to practice archery how could he do so when one is declared dedicated one can make even mountains bow with practice eklavya could shoot arrows with his index and middle finger and he became a greater archer than he was ever before his ring known spread far and wide when drona came to know this he blessed the boy silently and begged for divine forgiveness and true to drona's blessing eklavya is still praised as the most loyal and brave student in the epic of mahabharata moral of the story any knowledge teacher gives to, to students has value in life of a student as he goes on with life think from kindergarten till highest level of study you have completed see what you will be left with if there were no teachers in your life parents gives us life love and help in going right direction but teacher shows us how to live life shows us path and makes us self dependable so that we can pick the right path always respect your teachers do not value them any lesser than your parents when students succeed in studies and life it student who always gets praised by people not one who gave student knowledge to success teachers happiness is in student success and student should not forget at least thank politely to the one who made you capable of following journey of life and if you had learned what your teacher taught you with dedication and respect to towards teacher journey of life always gets comfortable if you like this story please like share and subscribe thanks for watching